Meanwhile, we want to welcome our, our most popular guest on the show. He's been on more than anybody else. He's been on more, really, more than I have, I think. He's not only an artist and a Photoshop expert, one of the first developers of Photoshop before it was even called Photoshop. In fact, if you use the paintbrush tool, you can thank Bert Monroy for a lot of the great artistic input into that. Author of Photoshop Studio, Bert Monroy, welcome. Oh, this is the new one, too, by the way. Yep, that's the new one. Commercial Photoshop. Just yep. came out. Is this the? Is this like hot off the presses? Uh, pretty much. It's out about three weeks now. Everything that uh, people who use Photoshop for for commercial purposes would need to know. Yeah, it's all in there. Com yeah. You know, compositing and. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, there's one thing that isn't in there, which is going to be only on the screensavers. What's that? That's the cover. How you did the cover? Now look this, at this. This is a special this little thing here, right let me there. Put this right my here. name right there. So it's like a movie marquee. Those plastic letters that they climb up on the ladder and they pop in there. Nah, that We're was the last minute thing we did for the cover, so I'm going to do it here. So it's, it's not, not in the, the book. book. Nope, but it's on the screensavers.com. Right. That's good. Let's see how you do it. All right, I'm going to start off. I have a little gradient right there. It's a little radio gradient. You notice the light tone in the middle. Okay. That's, that's the background, right? All right. So now I'm going to create another layer. And with my rectangular selection tool, I'm going to select a long rectangle like that. And we'll pick a light gray and a darker gray for the background color. And I'll throw a gradient right inside of that. Just like that. All right. I'm going to duplicate that down to here, and then another one down to here. These are the little slats that the letters go on. Oh to. yeah, sure, okay. Now it's a layer, so I'm going to give it a little drop shadow, just to give it a little depth. Okay, click OK. Well, that was easy. Look at that. That's real easy. So now come the letters. So I get my text tool. I return my color back to black there, and I'm going to type in Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Look at that. Oh. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to. Transform scale it. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to kind of move them into place here and kind of scale it up. I'm distorting them so they're going to fill that area just like that. Got it. All right. Now I'm going to need this for something else later, so I'm going to duplicate it. So save, save it. Make and, it okay. We're going to work yep. on a different layer. And I'm going to turn that eye off, so I'm okay. still working only on this one. Now what I'm going to do to this is to give it that bow effect, make it look like it's being bent. And if you look at the toolbar up here, the options bar, right here you have this little text warp tool. So I'm going to click on that and it brings me into this little area here. Now you see right now it says none because there's no distortion. Right. But I have a whole bunch of choices here. I'm going to choose bulge. Bulge. And you can see the bulge that it did it's there. It's bulging. But I want it to be vertical so it's going to affect oh, it on yeah, the it side. It goes out like that. See? I get it. The higher I pull it, the more it's going to get distorted. I'm right. going to keep, keep it just like that. Click OK. Good. So now, right behind it here, I'm going to create another layer. And with my pen tool, I'm going to create the actual plastic that these letters are sitting on. Okay. Now I'm going to start right up here just to the side of the H, and I'm going to pull out a handle. Click and drag, and then you notice I'm following the angle. I'm not going into the letter or away. I'm following the angle of that letter. And this I is a tool out. that's confusing to novices. It's confusing to a lot of people. Once you get it, it's the most powerful tool it's, for drawing. It's for drawing curves, basically. For drawing curves, okay. for drawing shapes, selections, anything okay. you want to do. So I come down here, and I'm going to click and drag and pull it. So that second point immediately went down to match it, and, and now you've matched the curve of the right. edge. Right, and, and it's very forgiving, so I can always go back in there and, and uh, adjust yeah, it if yeah, I have yeah, to. Yeah, okay. so that's now, the handles if I come over here, I'm going to get this long arc here. Oh, you don't here. want that. I don't want that. So that, this handle, I have to get rid of it. So holding on my Option button, I'm going to click on the point itself. Okay. Which gets rid of it, turning it into a corner point. Come way over here, and I click. That makes you, it allows you to do a straight line. A now. straight line. Got now, it. I need a curve here, so I'm going to pull, holding down that option button again, I'm going to pull out a handle, going up this way, following that curve, go up to the top, click and drag, and pull out a curve. There you go. Option, click on it, and option, close it off. So you've created a, a bowed rectangle kind a of. Nice, a yeah, ah, nice, yeah, nice little straight. Shape. All right. So, with that path, I'm going to pick a nice uh, light gray color like this right here, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that path with that tone. Right? So, so that's not a drawing. It's, a, it's like almost like a selection. It's a path. In this okay. case, yeah, I've created a shape, a path that I can okay. then use for something. Okay. In this case, fill it with color. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring down the opacity for that layer so I can start to see through it so it becomes this nice clear plastic like that. Cool. Now, another layer on top of that, I'm going to take my paintbrush. And I throw a big spread right across here. Shift oh, key so it Bert, contains. you ruined it. I'm yeah, so it sorry. Dirty, yeah. Oh, no. But watch what I'm going to do. Isn't that I'm gonna terrible? Option click between these two to clip it. And oh, see? my goodness. It it. Wait a minute. Not only did it clip it, it changed the opacity. The reason for that is because the base layer that's creating the clipping group has a, an opacity lowered. So, it not so only anything that it's clipping, it's going to lower that opacity It matches as well. the, 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 exactly. bar, the layer. Okay. Now, that's why I didn't put the letters into that clipping group, because I want them to stay solid black. Okay. The same thing with what's going to happen now. I'm going to create a layer on top of the letters and use my white and get a smaller brush. My close brackets here to make a smaller brush. I'm going to click out here and go straight across 
and I get this nice little white oh. sheen going across. And now let me guess, guess you're just going to clip that right to the... Uh... No, because by clipping no. it, it becomes transparent, and I want it to be on top of the letters. Oh. I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit, just so it's not so strong. Oh. And what I want to do is I'm going to turn that layer, the, the layer of the actual plastic, yes. into a selection by command-clicking on it. Command-click makes that a selection. It makes Whatever Very is in handy. that layer turns into That's selection. That's handy, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say inverse, select inverse. So everything else is selected. Not the... Not this Not part, the, but actual the outside. Play. Right, so when I hit the lead, since I'm in the layer with the white stri stripe, I hit the lead, it disappears. That's a very useful technique, oh, that I use selecting it a lot. and then doing yes. the inverse yes. to delete the outside. All right. So now, we're almost done. What we have to do now is, since there's a light coming through, and this is clear plastic, it has to create a shadow in back of the solid letters. That's where this second Sarah comes in. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to distort it a few different ways. So I don't need it to be type anymore. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and rasterize type. You never rasterize the first layer. Only no, because one. there I might want to change the, okay. the spelling, whatever. Oh, yeah, you could change the word, right? And right, just now I can't. It. Now okay. I can't. So now what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to go in there and distort this a little bit. So I'm going to scale, bring it down, and kind of just bring it so it just lines up with the letters right in there and a little bit over to the side right up in there. Let that happen, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur just to soften it up. Let's soften up a little more. Click OK. And bring down the opacity so that starts to become a nice little shadow in back. Oh, it's a shadow. Now, the last thing I got to do is because it's hanging out down below here, right. I'm going to take my marquee tool and select that little area down there and hit delete. And there Look we see that. that we got this nice little. Boy, is that realistic looking. Lens. That is quite amazing. That looks like that's a really amazing. How do you do it, Bert Monroy? You can get these Photoshop lessons now on CD, which That's is great. Right. They're being Linda. sold by yes. Linda Wyman at her site, lynda.com. Right. And That's this one is on screensavers.com only. Only. So don't expect to find it anywhere else, including Bert's new book. Well, you'll find it on the cover, but not inside. Not inside. That's why people have been writing and asking, how, how did you do, do that? that? Yeah, it's not in the book. you got to watch TV. That's right. Commercial Photoshop with Bert Monroy. Brand new. Just came out. For Bert's step-by-step -step instructions on making your own marquee letters just like that. And his links to buy his books, of course, you can find it all at thescreensavers.com. That was really fun. Thank that you, was, Bert. Really good. Yeah, that was fun.